Hello, I'm Reverend Wilma with the online Swedenborgian community, and you can visit us anytime there at www.swedenborgiancommunity.org. So we're exploring the arts, and particularly artists who were influenced in some way by Swedenborg, and in some way through their art are passing on some of the messages of Swedenborg. And by art, I mean the entire field of the arts, poetry, painting, music. And for example, um, Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Uh, she was born 1806 in England, and she was very talented in writing poems. She'd written an epic poem by the time she was 12. But then, when she was older, she wrote a book of poetry in 1844, and in it she praised her very favorite poet, Robert Browning. And after it was published, Robert Browning saw it and got in touch with her, and the two became very good friends and ended up being married. And she was introduced to Swedenborg in 1851 by a friend from London. And in her letters to friends, she often talked about Swedenborg. And in one of her letters, she called herself a Swedenborgian. In Continuing Vision, Alice Skinner points out that her work was very much focused on uses as she became very involved in the social issues of her day and used her art to explore those issues. Then there is George Aness, a famous painter of the Hudson River School. He became a Swedenborgian in 1860 when he was 35. A fellow painter, William Page, introduced him to Swedenborg and from then on, he felt that the purpose of his painting was to try and express Swedenborg's concepts in them. In 1893, the Chicago World's Fair, Aness was representing uh, the United States, and he had 15 paintings there. And he said he wanted to express the Swedenborgian concept of the presence of the divine in the earth. And he um, is very, very well known for his paintings. And then we don't want to forget music. We have Richard Yardernian. And he was born in Philadelphia in 1917 to Armenian immigrants. And he began playing the piano when he was very young. He was composing by age 15. And it's said in the book The Continuing Vision that Richard was notably influenced by the theology of Emanuel Swedenborg when he was older. Um, and his music got international recognition. He married a woman who was a Swedenborgian, Ruth Seckelman. And after that, he became a Swedenborgian. And they lived at the Lord's New Church in Burnatham until he died in 1985 at age 68. And he tried very much to express his feelings from a deep level inside of himself. And the woman he married, uh, Ruth, said that when she met him, she knew that his music had a spiritual message. And he found that message in the new church. And in the 1950s, he began writing hymns for the Lord's new church and was very active until his death in that community. So that gives you just an inkling of the many, many artists, musicians who have been influenced by Swedenborg. And we will continue to share um, messages that talk about how we can understand scripture through the arts, and particularly the arts of people influenced by Swedenborg. Thanks so much for listening, and have a blessed day.
Goodbye.